Hey, what's happening everybody? Today's video, how to wire a sub panel. Here we go. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be wiring up a 120 volt single phase uh, sub panel box. Now, if you wanna do 240, it's gonna be almost identical to what I'm doing here, except you're gonna have one more wire coming in, another hot wire. Usually it's a red, a black, a white, and then of course your ground. So really it's four wires, but they call it three wire. And uh, all you're gonna do differently is you're going to, you'll see in this video how I'm gonna have a jumper going from one section to the other to combine the two legs on the breaker um, to give it all 120 volts. But in this, in your situation, you're just going to have 120 on the top, 120 on the bottom, and then if you want to use both of those, you're going to have a double pole breaker that will combine the two to give you 240 volts, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. You'll be using that for things that require more juice, such as a welder, a washer, a dryer, things like that. Okay, And most households are set up for that. Mine is not set up for that out here because I'm running off a 100% off grid off of solar. So, uh, and I, I'm trying to keep my energy consumption low out here. So I'm doing single phase 120. So I just had to point that out before we start. All right. So for this one here, I'm going to show you guys an example. Um, so the, the first thing you got to figure out is how uh, you're going to select your sub panel box. Like, what are you looking for? Okay. So this diagram here is a simple drawing that I did. Um, this is just like um, a diagram here, and this is actually the kind of stuff I do before I plan out my electrical needs. Um, this example here, I'm going to be saying that this is, say, a garage, okay? And I want to have, uh, the, the garage is separated from the house, it's in its own building, or it's a shed, or something like that. And in this situation here, I'm going to plan out my circuits, okay? So I'm going to take everything that requires electricity... And I'm going to make a diagram and decide how I'm going to route my electricity into the sub panel and how many breakers I'm going to have or circuits. So in this situation here, I've got my lights. All right. I've determined that I'm going to need a 15 amp breaker. And I'm going to tell you how you determine what size breaker you're going to use. Um, it, that'll be up coming up soon. And then say here I got a welder. This is going to be a 20 amp and actually I have a 240 volt. So this is actually going to be uh, requiring a double pole breaker. This one here is going to be a refrigerator. I determined 20 amp and then tools 20 and then tools 20. Now, so one thing that I do know here is I are, see I already found the mistake here and this is, this wasn't done on purpose, but this is actually going to prove my point. So what I do is I simply will add up the amperage on these breakers, okay? Um, not how much you're using on these, but how much the breakers are going to be, okay? So the breakers, I determine there's going to be 95 amps on the breakers and five circuits. Now, this is wrong because if I went by this, the box that I got would be too small. Because this welder is going to be using a double pole breaker, meaning it's going to take up two slots. So in this situation here, this is going to become a six. And so I'm going to need a sub panel with at least 95 amp capacity. And I'm going to need six slots for my breakers, okay? So that's the bare minimum. So in some situation like this, I would be getting a 100 amp box and make sure that I have a minimum of six circuits, you know, preferably eight because, I, you know, you might want a couple spares in there. So, you know, you might, it's always better if you can size the box higher than what you're going to be using, all right? Um, so, you know, because you can always add to that later, but you can't add to a box that's already maxed out, okay? So, so that's how you're going to do this. So in this situation here, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to go with a 100 amp box and hope that I don't have to add any more and I'm going to need six circuits in there. So that's what I'm going to be looking at for this. So that's how you determine the box. Now, as far as the types of boxes, you have indoor, you have outdoor, you have all kinds of scenarios with the boxes. And I just don't have enough time to go into all those, but uh, basically... 
you know, you want to look for something in, in a sub panel situation. Um, almost always you're going to be doing this indoors. So you're going to look for an indoor panel, um, something that can mount properly to whatever setup you have. Um, in this situation here, I have this one going in the wall here. So that's the type of setup that I wanted with that type of face on it. So there's a difference between boxes like this. Okay. So, so that's how you determine the boxes. Um, and then we're going to go on to the next section. All right. So next thing we're going to talk about is how to select the wire when you're wiring up your circuits uh, to go to your breaker box. So this is actually a pretty deep subject and you really need to do more research than what I'm showing you here. I'm not an electrician, but I'm just going to tell you the basics. Okay. So AWG, American Wire Gauge, that's the, the what you're going to see on wires, okay? And so if you go to, say, Home Depot or Lowe's and you start looking at wires to wire a circuit, um, I'm going to go with, say, Romex. That's going to be like your most common wire that you're going to see, okay? And basically, it's individual wires that are insulated with an insulator on the outside and then those wires are also insulated on the inside and that's what you're going to see for normal like residential wiring okay there are so many different types of wires and we could be here all night doing this so i'm really like just simplifying this as much as i can okay so you'll see numbers like this uh, on the romex uh, wires you'll say 14 2 10 2 10 3 12 3 so what does that actually mean okay now the first thing, the first number is the gauge. Now, the way it works with gauges on wiring is the higher the number, the smaller the wire. That's where it can get confusing for people. So the higher that number, the lower amperage that that wire can actually handle. All right, so that's, that's how that works. Now, the second number here is going to get confusing again. You're going to have uh, the number of wires that are inside that insulated um, wiring setup. Okay, so basically, you see 14.2. What that's going to mean is there are two wires inside that are 14 gauge wires. Now, this does not include the ground wire. All right, you'll see ground written on the, the package, okay, that'll say includes ground. So really, in these situations, you will have a ground wire in there. So really, it's going to be three wires, but that's just how they do it. So um, you'll see 14.2, all right? And so generally for something like this, this would be running like a single phase. So if I were to run like a hot wire and a neutral wire, um, and I would run that to the box. Um, and then of course you would have your ground wire in there. So you'd say 14 too. Now I'm going to show you the gauges down here and, and the amount of amperage that they can handle. Okay. So I just went over the most common ones that you're going to see. Um, honestly, you won't even see this hardly at all, but you, you will see this, this, um, so you're going to see here, 15 amps is for your 14 um, gauge wiring, okay? That's that's the highest amount of amperage you want to run through these. So it's always a good rule of thumb if you know you're going to be cutting it close to this is just to go up in wire size. I mean, it's the easiest thing to do and, and it's the safest thing to do, especially if you're doing this in a house or a building. So, you know, this right here, this number is going to be your most common um, that you're going to see. Um, I usually will just go with 12 gauge and most of the wiring because you know it's 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 well above what I usually need um, so to keep me at 20 amps and um, you know this like I said it's just it's easy way to play it safe so most of my you know stuff that requires this I will just run with this and if I even approach 20 amps I'm going to 10 so that that's how I do it okay now there's also a couple things you have to know like there well I'll just go over a real simple thing is you're gonna have solid wire and you're gonna also have stranded wire now stranded wire you know a lot of times they'll use stranded wire on like smaller gauge wiring say if you're trying to run it through like conduit and stuff like that it's actually more flexible and it's easy to to run through a conduit than, than uh, the solid wire 
But for general wiring purposes in a building, you're going to be using solid wire, all right? So that's just something you need to know when you look at the differences here. And like I said, you're going to see all types of wiring and everything else, but you're generally going to get your wires packaged like this. You don't want to buy the individual spools of wire, okay, and wire it that way. That, that'd be ridiculous. You'd have to <laughs> you'd be spending all day doing that. So you really just, you, they package it all together like this, and you're going to see these numbers. Now, when you see, say, a three next to it, well, that just simply means this. You have, a, you have two hot wires and a neutral, uh, three, and of course your ground, so really there's four in there, but basically what you're going to have is you're going to have, use this for like, say, a 220 circuit, all right? If you're doing a 220 volt, 240, whatever, you're going to be using three wire at whatever gauge. So that's how that works, folks. So now we're going to go on to selecting your breakers. All right, folks, so there's this little place called the NEC or the National Electrical Code. And there's this thing called the 80% rule. And this is going to apply to your breakers. All right. So it's real simple. If you have a 20 amp breaker, you should only be running at 80% of that capacity of that breaker. So in other words, your continuous load which is described as three hours or more, um, should be at 16 amp max or 80%. So basically, when you're sizing your breakers for your different circuits or your branch circuits, you need to look and say, okay, I'm going to size this, um, you know, I'm going to figure out what my, my wattage used, and we're going to go into that in the next uh, little breakdown here. All right, everybody. So now what we need to know is we need to figure out how to determine uh, what size breakers that we're going to need. But in order to do that, we need to know how much power we're pulling off of each one of these circuits. OK, so this is called a power triangle and you can see here watts, amps, volts. And you can just remember this. You can look this up online. They even have little calculators online. You don't even have to do this math. Um, you know that you can just punch it into a formula. So you can see here, I broke it down for you. Watts is equal to amps times volts. Uh, amps is equal to watts divided by volts. And volts is equal to wattage divided by amps. So if you have two of the three on your information when you're looking at a device, um, some kind of appliance, if you know two out of the three, <clears throat> you're always going to know the voltage. So that's going to be one. So all I'll need to know is I'll need to know either the wattage or the amperage, okay? And sometimes they won't include all of them. They only include uh, one or the other, like amperage or wattage. So basically, I'll give you an example right here. So let's say I have a water heater, okay? And this is actually a real water heater that I just got. It's a small water heater, and it uses 1440 watts. That's all they said on the thing. They didn't tell me the amount of amps. So all I got to do is punch this into my formula here and say, okay, I need to know amperage. So I look here, I need wattage divided by volts. That gives me 12 amps. Now, in order to size my breaker, we go back to that 80% rule, okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to times this, or I'm sorry, divide this by 0.80, and that's going to give me 15 amps. So the 80% rule, in order to determine it off of this information, you just kind of take the reciprocal, and then you're going instead of uh, you know dividing it by 80, you just or times it by 80, you divide it by 80. So 0 0.80, okay, because it's percentage. And then I'm going back to my high school math here, but that's going to give you your 15 amps, and that's how you know the size breaker that you're going to need. So you do this on each one of those circuits, all right? And then you figure out the size breaker you need. Now, general rule of thumb is if you're in between breaker sizes, because they come in like, you know, 10, 15, 20 amp breakers. Um, if, it's, if it's above the 15, just size it up the next breaker up. Um, but, you know, you don't want to go too big on the breakers. It can be a little tricky there on the wiring, um, you know, but you always want to go safe. So whenever you're cutting it close, remember you go back to the wire rule that I have. If you're going to cut it close on that wire, uh, on the conductor size, the wire size, 
just go up the next one instead of going with 12 gauge go with that 10 gauge because then that way when you size your uh, breaker a little bit higher you know that you're actually using a bigger wire size anyway so you're safe so you can use that 20 amp breaker so that's what i would do now you also got to remember that when these units are rated like this say 1440 um, this is not going to be used that much, first of all. So this is, uh, when they say that, when they use that rating, that's based off of three hours of use continuously. This thing, probably the way we have it set up, it'll be on, so maybe an hour at a time. So this 15 amp breaker is going to be more than enough. It's going to be safe. Everything's good to go. The wire size is more than I need for this. So that's how you're going to do this, folks. You got to do this on every single circuit, all right? So all you do is you simply sit there, you do the math, You'll be thankful you did it. You got a peace of mind. You know you're doing it the right way. This is the one area in your in your building that you don't want to go cheap on or skimp on. Okay, don't under under uh, wire your your wires and don't under breaker your your wires. You're just asking for trouble. You're gonna set. You're gonna have a fire or something. Okay, it's not good. So this is something where you really just you got to bite the bullet and you need the budget for it. And you say, you know what? I I don't want to take the risk. So I'm going to go with the next size up, even though it's going to cost me a little bit more money. I at least now I'm not going to have to worry that something's going to catch on fire. So anyways, now I'm going to show you guys how to wire all this stuff up.